Hi guys, welcome back for another Unraid video. This is the first in an upcoming series of videos for simple Unraid user scripts that I'll be showing you. As you've probably seen in other videos, the user script plugin allows us to run custom scripts on our server to accomplish all sorts of tasks, whether simple or highly complex. I'd like to give a quick shout out and a thank you to the Unraid forum user Energen for the idea for this script for backing up only essential Plex app data. If you have your Plex app data on an unassigned device or you want to save space and time during a full app data backup, then this video is for you. So stick around and let's get started. As we dive in here, I think it's important to say for you as an Unraid user, it's important to always exercise a degree of caution when implementing a new or unknown user script. While I myself, as the proprietor of this channel, I certainly do my best as a weekend warrior for the Unraid community, but I don't assume any liability for loss of data or other essential components, so always double check the commands and the inputs that you're making when making changes to your system. With that out of the way, I'd like to show you what this script does not do first, and more about why it's important. So here on our Unraid dashboard, let's switch over to the Settings tab. Many of us by now are familiar with the App Data Backup and Restore Utility, which can include your entire Plex App Data folder. Now the difference between the script and the App Data folder is the script is going to be very targeted to what we back, back up. Plex is full, or Plex app data is full of uh, all sorts of metadata. It's got posters and images, and it's got thumbnails and video previews. And if you have a large Plex library, that can be huge to store as a backup, and it can take a lot of time. As you can see here over on the far right for this plugin, if you don't have this plugin, by the way, you should definitely install it. It's very straightforward. But if you don't have this plugin, or if you do have this plugin, over here on the right, you can exclude certain things from the, the backup. Now, ideally, what this script does is it lets you exclude Plex from the app data backup. The app data backup, when it runs, has to completely turn off all the Docker containers. And with a large and sizable backup, this can sometimes take a few hours, which optimally is run at nighttime. But in my opinion, the less downtime possible, the better. So I'm gonna open up a terminal window real quick. And I'm gonna run the following command to show you just exactly how big my Plex app data folder is. I'm gonna run du dash sh and then the path to my Plex app data. This can take a minute to run and scan, so I'll be back here in just a second. 321 gigs. Now that's a pretty sizable number. And it's also occupying a lot of space on my array every time I run a backup. Now if I take a look at this command right here, this is what we're essentially gonna be backing up using our script. And these are gonna be the databases that are inside of Plex. So if I run that, you can see how much smaller that is, 6.7 gigs. So what the script does is it backs up all the different databases in Plex, and then it backs up the preferences.xml. Let me show you real quick what the preferences.xml is. So here on this official Plex support article, we can get a better explanation of what it is exactly that we need to back up. The first thing that we'll see is that we need to back up the main Plex media server data. And these specific directions are actually telling you to just back up the entire app data folder. But the purpose of the script that we're running today is to save space on all of the media files. So to do that, we're going to just back up the databases in Plex as opposed to the entire cache directory like you'll see right here where it says for Windows and Linux systems 
you can exclude the cache directory that will save time and space in the transfer. The next thing that we want to do is back up the preferences.xml. And you can see right here under the Linux and NAS platforms, the XML is in the main Plex Media server directory and it contains the corresponding settings. So that means there isn't anything else special that you need to back up aside from the databases. So now that we understand what we're going to be doing with the script, if you scroll down into the comment section below, I've left a link to download the script from a Google Drive folder. Once you get that unzipped on your desktop, go ahead and open it up with a real text editor. And let's take a look at what we're going to be doing. The directory is the source of our Plex app data in the database. So on your server, you want to get this directory path from your app data folder. And I'll show you how to do that next. Back on our Unraid dashboard, we can go to shares, app data. I'm going to scroll down to Plex, library, application support, Plex media server. And we want to stop here because this is the path that we're going to copy and paste into the script. Now you don't need to go any deeper in the subfolder directories. The script will handle that for us. Yours may look slightly different depending on whether you're using MNT slash cache or MNT slash user or based on your container author's settings. But once you get to the Plex Media Server file level, then we can copy and paste that into the script. Which is what I've done right here in the Plex app data location for directory. The next thing we want to do is fill in the destination path. So on my server, I've already created a folder using my Mac Finder. The easiest way to do this is to open up a Finder window, connect to your server, and I have a backup share already set. And then here is my main media server, and I've created a new folder right here for Plex. So once you get that set up, Back on our Unraid screen, we can go back to our shares. There's my backup share. And there's Plex right there. So let's copy that path. And enter it right here. However, one thing you want to make sure of is that you don't delete this at all right here. This is going to enter a time-stamped folder for each backup that we run. So make sure to leave this part right here intact and only change this part of the path here. Once you get that done, you'll want to enter for pdest this same folder right here but leave out the date part. So we're going to be entering this right here. We're going to enter that twice. Once here on the destination and then again on pdest. Now on this script, I'm using rsync and the in option of rsync is for a dry run. And that's what I have this added on as a default for everyone to run. So. I want to make sure first that we get all our paths correct. So we're going to leave this in right here just for the time being. And then once we're sure that everything is successful after the dry run, we'll take that in option off and run a real sync. Down here at the bottom, we have an option to remove old backups. So right here after the plus sign on the M time command is the number of days for you to keep the old backups. If you're running this daily, you may only want to keep three days worth. Uh, maybe you want to keep a week's worth, I don't know. But if you're running this once a week, you might want to change this number to something more like every 21 days, which would be three backups. But if you're running this daily, 
it's probably going to be a much lower number. For my case, I'm going to keep it at three days and leave it at that. One last thing that we can do here is if you'll notice right here, I have uncomment the next line to enable a GUI notification upon completion. If you take this pound sign off, that's the only thing you have to do, and that will enable a notification upon completion of the script. However, even if the script fails and you have this uncommented, this will still show that it was the script was completed. So this is really just only to uncomment once you have your script lined out and all the paths set. So we're gonna save that for last. So now that we have this entered correctly, the easiest way to put it on the server is just to copy and paste it. So I'll copy that. And on my settings, I'm gonna open up the user scripts plugin. And at the bottom, I'm gonna hit add new script. And for this one, even though I've already got this installed, I'm just gonna call this test plex backup. You can call it whatever you'd like. And now I'm on test plex backup. I'm gonna hit edit and paste in the script. So now that we're here, we've made all our changes. We can go ahead and hit save. And on test plex backup, I'm gonna hit run, and this is gonna do a dry run of our script. There's the first command. This is backing up the databases. Everything's running good there. It's created the directory. Total size, dry run, is in good shape. Searching for and deleting old backups. So now that we can see that everything is ready, we can go ahead and hit done. Oh, before we do, one last thing. You'll notice right here the total transferred file size, 7.04 gigs. Now, keep in mind earlier that we checked the size of our Plex cache data, or Plex app data, and it was 321 gigs. So this is a significant savings. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and close that off. We're gonna open our script back up, back up and remove the in option. So let's delete that one. Delete the one right above it. And one last thing to do on this line right here where it says chmod r77pdest, let's uncomment that chmod, scroll down, and I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment the GUI notification and save my changes. Now it should be ready to go. So let's run that script and see how it looks. Okay, now we can see the script is done. Everything appears to be in order. This right here is the backup of our preferences.xml file. And this here is the backup of our database. If we scroll up, we can see all the individual files as they're backed up with the new date stamp folder right here. And we should be in good shape. Here's our notification that the script ran. And the last thing to do is to be sure to set that on the schedule that you like. If you remember, I had this set to remove old backups every three days. So I wanna schedule this daily, hit apply, and now we're all done. To verify that the script is working and that the logs are accurate, we can come over to our finder window. After at least the first day, you should start seeing the dated folders appear in your backup directory. I've been running this for a couple of weeks now, and you can see that it only stores four backups. So the way the 
backup deletion works is it, in my case I've got it set to delete backups that are older than three days so I'll have four backups here and in each one of these you can see the databases and the preferences.xml in each date stamped folder which is exactly what we want in the event that we need to restore or create a new container from a backup all we have to do is go to our new app data folder go to Plex library application support Plex media server plugin support replace this databases folder right here and then replace this preferences.xml file right here and you're good to go just restart the container alright guys that's gonna do it for this video hopefully now some of you have a nice set it and forget it kind of way to only do essential plex backups if you're new to user scripts and unraid they can seem a bit daunting at first if you're a script or unraid veteran this may be slightly below your skill set but hopefully it at least offers some additional inspiration for maximizing your server's utility. Over the next few weeks I'll be releasing some more videos on user scripts and the user script plugin and hope to make it a recurring theme here on the channel for not only my own scripts but other Unraid users. If you have a script you'd like me to feature a video on or maybe an idea for a useful script, drop a line in the comment section. I'm not a scripting expert myself but I'll certainly do my best and take a look also keep in mind the Unraid forums are another great place to go if you have an idea or are workshopping an idea of your own. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, have a great day.